Good morning, guys. Welcome back. I'm Yolo, and today is May the 12th, and this is day 63 on the Y O L O. I'm getting ready to pack up now, load up, and head uh, 2.8 miles to the shelter to get water. I do have uh, enough water to get up there. I don't want to tow it anymore because it is straight up uh, for the most part. So off I go. I'll talk to you guys a little later uh, once I get my right knee lubricated up and uh, get going. So it's going to be a blessed day. Sun's out, birds are chirping. So I hope to meet some new people and uh, get to know them. Talk to you guys later. So guys, I'm hiking along and I uh, come across a couple of hikers. Uh, they're uh, just doing a weekend hike or a couple day hike. So would you guys mind just introducing yourself and say where you're from and hey, why my, you're doing this? My name's Scott. I'm from Northern Virginia. And, and my, my name is Steve and I'm from Northern Virginia and I say I'm happily retired so I do this whenever I want. You got, are you guys buddies and you guys hook up buddies to college. do this? Yep. So. Wow, all right, yeah. that's good. Yeah. And what do you guys do professionally? Or you're retired now, or what did yeah, you do? Yeah, and, and I'm retired too. I used to be an anesthesiologist. And Steve? I'm, I'm a retired, uh, I was an engineer, and then I became a package so. Okay, uh, and just because you guys are a little bit older, yeah. I'm trying to explain to people that are in their chairs that yeah. it doesn't matter what age you are. So do you mind right. just saying your age? I'm 66. We're both 66. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you guys are able to get out here and do this and you're just uh, taking... Physiologically, we're both about 35 or 40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just big, put that on the record. All right. All well, right. I appreciate it, guys. Thank hey, you very safe much. Safe travels to you. Safe travels. Well, guys, that to me is what... Uh, this trail is about just meeting people. So after we uh, turned off the camera, we talked a little bit more. And uh, I don't know if they said in the uh, interview, but uh, the one guy is uh, engineer and patent attorney, and he's retired now. And then the other guy was an anesthesiologist. So they were high school buddy, or I'm sorry, college buddies. They played soccer together in college. And they're both 66 and they're both retired but we were uh, talking about uh, life and i was letting them know that most of my friends are uh, retired because it's uh, people at church uh, that have the time to do mission work and uh, do stuff like that but uh, like i said most of my friends are 66 and older so uh, they were talking about uh, relationships with their spouses. They said that uh, their spouses want them out of the house and going to do something because uh, they were used to them going to work and their spouses uh, doing their own thing in the morning. And he says uh, after a couple of weeks of being retired that uh, the one wife would be upset and grumpy in the morning. And it was simply because she had been accustomed to him not being there uh, when she got up, she was able to uh, take her shower and drink her coffee and read the newspaper. And just his presence sort of irritated her because it was out of her routine. And that's not the first time that I've, I've heard someone say something to that effect that it's just uh, you know, the husband has to get out of the house to go do something because that routine has now changed it's affecting their relationships. I don't want that to happen to my wife and I as uh, we phase into this retirement, but I hope I can stay active like those two men. <laughs> so it was great running into them and just talking to them, and, uh, just talking about life and talking about uh, how lucky I am to be able to be out here at the age of 51 to do this because we're not guaranteed what tomorrow will bring about a, a hip or a knee or uh, something like that so enjoy life while you can so that's why my name is yolo because you only live once and if you don't do this stuff and you wait till you retire or wait until you uh, are able to do this it might be too late uh, you wait until you have enough money 
I don't know how much money you need, but there may not be enough money. You wait until you retire and then you don't have your health. So I guess what I'm saying is enjoy life while you can. You gotta save money for the future, but spend a little bit in order to have a little bit of adventure in your life and build some memories and some stories instead of just working in a uh, cubicle or working on a production line or just doing whatever you you do so enjoy life while you can because there's going to be a point where you may have the money but you may not have the health or you may have the health and you may not have the money so just do it so i'm still hiking down to uh, the shelter i think i have about a quarter mile my uh, time frame is now lost because I stopped for 15, 20 minutes talking to those two men. And uh, so I'm not sure how long water is, but I'll get there when I do. But uh, and then it's mostly uphill all day today. So I'm not looking forward to that. But the good thing is they said that uh, I think after today, it's going to sort of level out a little bit and we'll be able to cruise uh, on some flatter stuff. But he said in order to get to the flatter stuff, there's gonna be some rocks and ridges that we have to go over. So we'll see how true that is. They're just out for a couple days. So what their perspective is versus what mine is as a through hiker may be different, so. get my pack off and see if we can get some water. So I rinsed the filter out because I haven't rinsed it out in a little while. So now it's rinsed out. This is the V3 filter that I was rinsing out. So now all I'm gonna do is just filter this water. We've got uh, everything loaded back up, so we're gonna hit the trail. Say goodbye to the waterfalls. That is very pretty back there. And just the sound. It'd be nice to just record this and just have 10 hours of uh, this waterfall. This is the uh, indicator for the shelter. So it's like hieroglyphics. We got uh, shelter that way, tenting that way, and something that way. Pretty original. It's the first time I've seen that. And then on the other side, we have tenting. I was just past the waterfalls. So I think, oops, go this way. What the heck is that way then? Oh, I don't know. It's just shelter and tenting, I guess. But there's a trail going that way, and then the trail going this way. I thought this was to the shelter, which it may be, but uh, it's also marked white. So this is the Appalachian Trail. That was a little confusing there. It's cute, but a little confusing. We got these, uh, this boulder field that we have to go across. Let's see if I can do it while I'm videoing. But this uh, really slows you down and you have to plan pretty much each step uh, before you take that step or else you may lose it. I think that one there was loose. You never know. That's it, man. It's large stones you gotta walk on. We're almost out of it, I think. Although, it seems like it goes on now. 
but there are some flat spots so you don't have to walk on the rocks <coughs> here's a, another good area that you gotta tear your feet up on and we're not wearing steel tank or steel shank boots or anything so our feet are just like folding over these rocks and we feel the creases and everything so if you had a pair of boots on your boots wouldn't flex a whole lot they would grip but they wouldn't flex but we're running uh trail runner tennis shoes now these shoes have just a little over 500 miles today so I put these on at mile marker 319 I know that because I wrote it inside the sole of the shoe so I can see how many miles I get out of it I'm currently at 800 and I don't know 20 I forget what it is but anyway, there's a little over 500 miles now. My wife is going to bring me a new pair because I had purchased uh, four pair before I left, I think it was, or maybe three. So I have this at the house. And when she comes visit me uh, next week or the week after, she'll bring those. And these will be discarded. And I'll write the new mileage in the new ones and see how many miles I get in. By the time that uh, my wife gets up with me, these may have 650 miles on them. So we'll do a little memorial service, I guess. Anyway, I'm out of breath. Let me uh, keep hiking here. We're going uphill. I'm getting near the top. Uh, I've been feeling quite a bit of moisture, but I got on a rock. So it tells me we must be getting close to the top because this is usually a sign. But this valley is now socked in. The view that I had, I should have taken it earlier. I think I'm gonna have to maybe stop and. I don't know if you can see the rain coming in, but I need to go ahead and get my umbrella out and take some shelter before I get wet and uh, nasty. So it's not very good when you got damp clothes on. I put damp clothes on this morning, but I'll uh, try to keep somewhat dry. I'll go ahead and uh, get my umbrella out and deploy it so that I can keep from getting more damp. So let me do that. Well, it is starting to rain now, uh, heading back up. That lady uh, that you just saw, uh, we stopped and talked for about 15 minutes. I'd recognized her and come to find out uh, she was uh, the lady that she won a bet on, on how many hikers they were gonna see. And that was back at Parisburg. Uh, we had talked about Christ and faith, so she's uh, back to hiking by herself because the partner that she was with, her hiking partner, uh, started doing some stuff that she didn't like, using some verbiage and wordage and uh, calling women uh, the B word. And she finally had enough and said, that's it. So there's three of them sharing a uh, motel room, which is not uncommon for hikers to uh, share a hotel room with uh, somewhat strangers. So she had enough. And when he was out, she just packed up her bags and moved on. So congratulations to her for not putting up with that nonsense and crap. Anyway, 
she saw me and she recognized me and she's like what's your name uh so i was like i'm yolo and then for i don't know probably 15 seconds she was just yelling yolo yolo she was happy uh she was almost tearful too because she was happy to see me because we had talked about faith in christ when we met the first time and she's been going through a lot of stuff right now emotionally because of her partner leaving and just the things on her mind so it was a blessing for me to be a blessing for her so i'm glad that you were able to keep pressing on and moving on as you can see it's still raining so we were just finishing up our talk and the clouds came rolling in so let's see if we can get up this uh, boulder without falling here we go <clears throat> that was a, a little bit of a, a struggle getting up there where uh, we stopped to talk a while ago because of the terrain I did not slip and fall uh, it seemed like there was a foothold every once in a while there's a couple long stretches problem is the umbrella it was so so steep that my umbrella was almost touching the rocks in front of me as I was bending over to try to go up I actually had to use my hands to pull up on some of the areas I thought we were up on the ridge but I think this is just a ledge I think the AT is going to have us go up this mountain here that you can't see because it's covered with the cloud alright let's keep getting it Uh, it's starting to give you a view of this if I can. Seems like the Appalachian, tra Appalachian Trail takes you on the highest and most rugged spots. I think that's the uh, high elevation for today. I'll have to stop and check. I still have an hour, so that's probably two miles away, so that's about right. When I say an hour, it's probably an hour and a half now. So I was planning on eating lunch at the top of the mountain. If it's like this, I may not want to. I wish I would have got the uh, excitement that she showed, but uh, you don't want to wipe out your hair. Sorry, you don't want to pull out your camera and just start recording when people come because that's a little awkward. But and then after it happens, you almost want to say, "Hey, wait, do that again," so we can get it on film. That's not realistic, so that's why we don't do it. It's good that uh, she remembered me because it makes me feel good that uh, I'm building uh, some little spiritual things, dropping seeds and talking to people. And apparently the seed with her worked. It's talking about our faith on the trail and, and dropping little seeds along the way so that someone else can maybe fertilize them make that relationship with Christ to grow a little bit. Alrighty, here we go. Starting to rain. Whoa. 
little harder. All right, guys, I'm heading up the mountain. And we got a uh, four guys here, so they're gonna introduce themselves. He's true love from the Outer Banks of North Carolina, which is here for a couple of days hiking. Andre from Lucky Bat, North Carolina, on his poppy. Poppy. Stan, uh, self named Diesel from Belmont, North Carolina. <laughs> you got a lot of black back blow. Stan from Newquay Marina. All right. Way to go, Yolo. 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 You're welcome. As they're getting closer to the summit, it's getting more socked in in here. We're in the clouds, definitely. And I just missed the trail because I was hiking and I had to get the uh, far out out to get me re-navigated back to the trail. It was just off uh, maybe 15, 20 feet, but the trail just sort of stopped at this lookout point. So. It actually made a right hand turn just before the lookout spot so all right we're heading back up we still have a half a mile to the summit maybe the sun will be out and this cloud will be blown blown through let's hope well just as easy as that the sun is starting to come out and the cloud has moved on. All right, let's get going. I think we're near the ridge. Here's the sun here. Murphy's Field Shelter 2.6, Reed's Gap. Here's the AT. Let's see if we're at the well, top. I made it to the top now. Uh, there's, there's nothing to see uh, because it's all clouded in. You can see the rain coming in still. Uh, I am going to go ahead and head on down instead of taking lunch up here. I also don't have any cell phone service, so I can't check messages or anything like that. So I don't know if I'll get cell signal today at all because now I'm going down into a valley. Typically, if we get on top of the mountain, we get some type of signal, but there's nothing here. I didn't walk to the edge of the mountain, but uh, if I do that, I may have something. I could try that at least, so let me do that. Let me walk back up a few steps and just go over to the edge and see if uh, the mountain is causing the interference or what, so. All right, let me do that real quick. All right, there was nothing. So it might be because of the clouds, it might be uh, just because there's no signal. It could be, I don't know, but anyway, there's no signal. So there's a shelter in 2.8 miles. Uh, again, that's about an hour and a half. So I think I'll eat before then. But there's really nothing up here except for wind. So I'm going to head on down. And maybe by that time, uh, some of the clouds will break. And I can sit down and eat without having to have my umbrella to protect me from the rain or pineapple mist. Which is basically about what it is. That's uh, what happens in Hawaii. Is when I say it rains, it really is just misting very heavy. And that's basically what it is now. So in a cloud, and you know, wait until this cloud gets through or blows by or sun burns it off. Or I don't know. But I'm not dying of starvation yet, but I think I'll eat before I get uh, an hour and a half from now. But we'll see. All right, heading down the mountain now. It's just as steep going down as it is up, so see how it happens with it being wet. Well, I'm coming into the shelter. It's uh, 1.48 p.m. I uh, just decided I would come on down so I could undo my uh, pack and to get my rain gear ready for this evening. I was up on the mountain and I had internet, so I paid some bills, uh, did some stuff I needed to do. Coming into 
the shelter. And looks like I'm the only one here, maybe. So I'll go ahead and uh, make lunch. There is a uh, parking lot on up the road. Uh, and I had a tradition of not eating lunch until I get to that parking lot because there just may be trail magic. But it's uh, 10 minutes till two and it's another two, two miles, I believe it is. So by the time I get there, I'll be really hungry. So let me uh, just get ready and uh, get my stuff prepared. And I can go ahead and enjoy lunch with a pack off break and uh, read the journal and see who uh, has been here and see if I can fi find Cy and Isabella. So, all right, let me uh, get to lunch. I do have a bear bag hang right here. So you take this pole and you raise up and you hang your stuff up there. So that's unique. So, all right, let me get to it because it is starting to rain again. So I keep it right here. And I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. gonna get it through this ring all right i can't do it so i mean i get back okay that's definitely a two-handed job i can't do it but uh, anyway it is raining again i did get out my uh, rain gear i wasn't aware that it's supposed to be raining uh today or the upcoming rain but uh i checked the weather forecast after someone said something to me about it and it didn't look like it was supposed to start raining until eight o'clock tonight but it is 250 and it's raining so I believe I believe I believe I believe this is the way I need to go Let me uh, check this out and make sure I'm going the correct direction. It says the AT. Sometimes you get turned around when you get off the trail uh, to go to the shelter uh, because there's several entrances. So I think that was a different entrance than what I came on. So I'll check it out real quick. Coming out to a parking area in the road where I thought maybe they would have some uh, food, but they don't. And I might be able to pawn off some trash to these cyclists. I just uh, commandeered these uh, cyclists to get my trash. So I said, hey guys, I got a weird request. Will you guys uh, take my trash for me? So here's a tractor with a mower. It looks like they just mowed this field so I don't know if that's good or bad but it is what it is but anyway the uh, cyclists they were just finishing up a uh, road ride they are from Boston and they came down to ride this area I guess and it's the ladies 51st birthday so they didn't know it was supposed to be raining so it is it's not supposed to rain until 8 p.m. According to the weather app, but uh, it's raining and we're walking, we're hiking. Let's see what this sign says up here. It'll make you sick. Welcome to the Appalachian Trail. Reads the gap to Rockfish Gap. Maintained by the Old Dominion Appalachian Trail Club.
two waterfalls. Somewhere. I don't know. There by the tree, there it is. Sorry for the foggy lens, but we're in the clouds again. And everything is wet and it's been very rocky and stony. So I've been having to be very careful with my foot placements. And maybe we're out of it now. I don't know. I might be able to make up a little time now. It's about 10 minutes after five. Got about six more miles, three hours to go. Although it might be longer than that because I've been going slow because of the boulders and the rocks. So I know I definitely haven't been going two mile an hour. So it might be a little while. My goal is a remote tent site about 10 miles outside of Waynesboro so I can get to Waynesboro around lunchtime tomorrow. It's supposed to rain and Waynesboro is where uh, an outfitter is that has my replaceable replacement Sea to Summit ether light uh, air mattress that mine continues to get holes from the welding of the front plate and the back plate here's a uh, spring this makes things a little muddy oh here's the rocks again so we have to be very careful because my feet are slick because my tread is uh, probably about 30% and the rocks are wet and I don't have much grip on my shoes. I see nothing! I'm in the clouds. This is, I believe, the first whiteout on any view. Uh, on the Appalachian Trail for me. So it's pretty amazing that out of uh, the 63 days being on trail, that this is the only day that I haven't really seen a view. And I may stick around for a little while and see it, but I don't have that luxury. I've got miles I gotta get in. So here I go, back up the mountain. I'm on this rock. Slick rock. Very, very slick rock. All right, back in the woods. I'm sure it would be a nice view if it was there, but it's not. Come out the road crossing. It's all fogged in. So I had to be very careful about crossing the road. Anyway, pressing on to the campsite. Well, it's 6.40. It is still raining. Um, coming down off another mountain. A lot of times this is my view. You know, needless to say I'm going down the mountain, but typically when I'm going up the mountain, this is pretty much my view. I don't get to see what's up ahead because it's higher than my umbrella. So I'll have to stop and tip the umbrella back to see where I'm going to get a view of it. But the trail is uh, becoming soggy and slick with stones. This is sort of like uh, yesterday with the, the stones. They're dissipating now, but I just came up over the mountain and there's a lot of shards like this right here. Like this rock is standing on its edge. These are standing on their edge. A lot of rock like that. Sort of tear your foot up. Ew. Like that one. 
I still have about uh, two hours, if not more, of walking. It will be uh, dark here in about an hour and a half because of the rain, if not sooner. So I'll try to check in with you every once in a while. I don't know if you can hear the rain hitting the umbrella, but my hand that's holding the phone, which is my right hand, is uh, becoming uh, waterlogged and soggy. So it is, uh, it gets wet more than the other hand because the umbrella is on my left shoulder, so therefore it's offset to the left. And my right arm, my right forearm and hand uh, gets wet where my left hand soars, uh, tends to stay dry. Er, like right now, I had to raise the umbrella up so I could see what's coming up and get an idea of it. Usually, I just have the uh, four to six foot in front of me that I'm looking at. I'll get this up here by my eye. So I have to raise it back for a moment to see. So anyway, moving on. That was uh, pretty nice. He just offered me a ride into Waynesboro to Stanimals. The only problem is uh, that was his car back there at the parking lot and I'm probably a mile and a half, two miles uh, north of his car now. So I don't want to go south. Plus, I don't want to go to Waynesboro tonight. Uh, I want to press on north and just uh, camp uh, up here. I want to get uh, staged about uh, 10 miles outside of town so I can get there in about five miles. So if I get up early, which I don't know if I will since it's raining out and it's supposed to be raining for the next couple of days, Ooh, about saw me fall there, uh, next several days, uh, I tend to take my time a little bit when it's raining and when it's cold, we tend to stay in our tents longer. Don't know why, but it's what we do. But anyway, let me uh, put my phone up and uh, get going. Every time I run into someone, it puts me behind about five or ten minutes. So we stop and talk to them. But that's what this journey is about for me. It's not about getting to this tent spot. It's about the journey getting to the tent spot. So, all right, here we go. Here's a lookout. Come here, you'll see the tree that's uh, maybe 30 foot in front of me. We're all socked in. It's a lot darker than what it appears on the video. So much so that I need to uh, try to find a break in this rain or whatever it is, or take shelter for a few minutes and dig out my headlight. Because uh, I don't want to be caught in the dark. I'm trying to get my headlight out. This is pretty gnarly. There's the white blaze. There's another white blaze. At least we're going the right direction. I'm sure this has a wonderful view. But it doesn't have the view that you want to see. My ugly mug. So anyway, I'm going to uh, probably find a place down here as we go down the mountain. Uh, some shelter or something. Uh, the tree, thick tree, I don't know. But I need to uh, get my backpack and get my headlight out, like I said. I've already got my rain gear on top and ready to deploy if I need to. But uh, as of right now, I don't need to. It's uh, pretty warm, but it's pretty nasty out. All right, you gotta get up these rocks. So let me get to it. Well, I stopped to uh, get my headlight out, which I got on. On my head, not on, but uh, God's got a pretty funny uh, sense of humor because they had a lull in the rain and 
it wasn't raining. I got my pack off. Just as soon as I got my pack open, it poured down harder than it has all day. So that was pretty funny. But I was able to get uh, my phone charger out and get my uh, wire fed through my shoulder strap. I might have to stop again and get my rain pants on because this is starting to get cold. But anyway, uh, got the cord through so I can get my phone charged back up. I'm getting down to like 19%, so I'll go ahead and uh, charge it up for a little while. But it's raining harder. May, like I said, might have to stop and get my rain pants on, take my pack back off, get my rain pants so that uh, the wind and stuff doesn't cool my body down too much. Sorry for looking up my nose, but I don't want to get my phone all wet when I'm videoing. I think if I get down a little bit, I'll be more protected, but right now I think I'm on top of the mountain. All right, here I go. Heading north, in the rain, down the mountain, heading to Maine. Well, it's 8 p.m. I guess the weather forecaster was right. It was going to rain at 8 p.m. So we got it right, finally, from 2 o'clock to now. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm still uh, heading down the mountain. Uh, my feet are starting to get shredded up by the rock. So I think I will get off trail when I get off trail here get to that remote tent spot because there are no areas up here where I can tent uh, because it's just not level and it's very rugged so let me get off the mountain it seems like every time I think I am off the top I'm back on the top again so and I'll start heading down and the next thing you know I'm going back up so all right, I'll check in a little while later. And uh, see what y'all are doing. Got this rock wall on top of the mountain. So I've been complaining about these rocks, but it looks like people have been stacking them up for quite some time. Maybe digging them up or whatever. So thank you. I think this is bad here, the dark. It's getting pretty dark out, so the camera's been having to really work. But there's a whole, whole wall of rocks. And they continue right here. There's probably 200 foot, lineal foot of stone. Well, they go on. They go on and on and on. All right, maybe a couple football fields. They are continuing on. So maybe someday, Someday, this might be a somewhat smooth path. Right now, it's treacherous. My hands, my hands, I don't know if I can see it or not. But I got dishpan hands uh, because the, the cork on my trekking poles are saturated and soaked. So, it is what it is. It won't, it won't kill me or anything. But I just wanted to show you that uh, wall, or if that's what you want to call it, just a, a stacked rocks. There's still plenty of rocks to go. Well, it's nine o'clock. Let me, uh, I'm still hiking. Visibility is pretty low because of the fog. It's sort of like having your headlights uh, on when you're driving in the fog. So let me flop the camera around. Still got a mile to go. All right, here's the visibility. 
I can turn my headlight on brighter, but it just illuminates more of the uh, fog. So I just need about four foot of space, and I'm hoping that there's no uh, nothing hanging low that I'll hit my head on. If not, I guess I'll find out when I hit my head on it. All right, this will probably be it for tonight. We'll be wrapping up uh, 20 miles, I think, 21, 22 miles to run there. I'll give you the official word tomorrow, I guess. But uh, when I get into camp, it will be dark. Big old burl on this tree. Uh, I'll give you the official count tomorrow when I get in. The buffalo? I don't know what it is. Let me see if I can get it. Whoops. It's a buffalo head. There's an eyeball right there. Anyway, uh, when I get into camp, I'll have to be quiet because uh, there'll be other campers, I'm sure, and I don't want to disturb them. It's already 9 o'clock, which is hiker midnight. So, you guys have a great evening. I'm YOLO. You only live once, so do it right the first time, and there won't be a need to do it again. Talk to you all later. <laughs>